A new Bitcoin whale emerges, and he might just be best friends with Peter Schiff. Wait till you hear what company has decided to purchase over $1.7 billion worth of BTC. Also, the SEC wants $2 billion, that's with a B, dollars from Ripple in their lawsuit. Good luck. We also have some altcoin news, including some news from Akash Network and how their space is growing. Also, we got Magic Internet Money joining us to break down the charts. We might just put in a couple live trades on today's show. It's going to be a good one. You don't want to miss it. Let's get going. Hola! It's your boy, Big Rob, back in the house. Welcome to Sin City Crypto. If this is your first time checking us out, we're the entertainment-focused cryptocurrency channel. We take all boring and stale information, repackage that thing up in a fun and sexy way. Wondering why I'm sitting down. Well, studio's still under construction. And they threw away my standing desk. Mm. Now, unfortunately, I have to sit next to David. Mm. Very unexcited. Uh, and I heard you also sit down when you do other things as well. <laughs> before, we get, uh, before we get too ahead of ourselves, I would like to give a massive, massive, massive thank you to our dear friend, Jimmy. Uh, he was here for seven hours with us yesterday, helping us put the studio back together. So, Jimmy... We love you, man. We appreciate everything you do for us. Uh, so from the bottom of our hearts, or at least mine, because Robin doesn't have one, thank you so much. We love you. We appreciate you. Um, all right. With that being said, there there it is. Production room. So we, uh, I had to split up. You know, if you've been watching our show, you know, Robin and Rocco got this thing going on, right? They're always, like, backing each other. I had to split them up. So we spent some money. Uh, yeah. We spent some money uh, building a production room. So now we've Still completely work. separated Rocco and we've sat Robin next to me. So if he gets out of line, it's much easier to just reach over and just bloop, punch him around the nose. Now, let's talk about what company is buying $1.7 billion worth of Bitcoin. And that is none other than Nylum Resources. So here we go. Let's take a look here. Nylum Resources enters intent to acquire 24,800 BTC. Uh, now, this is a, a pink sheet, which means uh, they're a penny stock company. But today they announced that it has entered into a letter of intent with Cyber Data Limited to acquire 100% of the common stock of a special purpose entity to be established under the name MindWave that will hold 24,800 Bitcoin. So pretty much they're selling some stock and they're using that money to buy Bitcoin. Uh, these assets will serve as collateral to raise capital for investment in high yield generating projects. Now, why is this kind of funny? Well, Nylum Technologies is a South American gold and precious metal producer. <laughs> this was tweeted from Max Kaiser, Peter Schiff reading this. <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny. Um, Robin, are we going to see more? Oh, and by the way, the article, uh, I didn't go, let me see if I highlighted that. They went over uh, what they plan on doing. So they plan on leveraging the Bitcoin on their balance sheet to be able to raise more capital uh, to build out their business and fund their business. So isn't it ironic, Robin, uh, that a gold mining company is using Bitcoin to leverage to spend more money to mine more BTC? What are your thoughts? So a gold mining company is trying to acquire bitcoin just for itself but they're not mining bitcoin right no no no, no. okay they're, okay, they're that's, okay they're that's, that's, um it's interesting and so the transition from gold as a store of value uh from institutions on the portfolio or treasury assets or, or just simply as a hedge against inflation uh, well it also goes to well institutions that hold gold or offer gold services and products so I think this is what we're going to see a lot more of. What are you laughing at? It's just so ironic and funny. And I'm just thinking about that Max Kaiser tweet with, mm. that, with that gif. Yeah. You know, this is going to... So here's the thing, right? Michael Saylor and what he's doing at MicroStrategy is a case study. And you better believe that the all these companies, the likes of Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, name it. You name it, right? Any S&P S &P top 500 company... Which, by the way, MicroStrategy is moving up the ranks. They have, uh, they just surpassed a, I forget the name, it was a really big company, but they're ranked in the top 250 in the world now as their price 
sold over $1,800 per share. But they're looking at what Michael Saylor has done, what they're able to do, and how it has successfully not only made money for themselves, but for their shareholders as well, which if you're a publicly traded company, essentially your number one job is to keep your shareholders happy. They're investors in your business. And so you want more people to invest in your business? You make them a lot of money. And we're taking a look at what Michael Saylor's doing like, holy crap, the dude, uh, what was the number? Like 600% over the last, what, one year? That MicroStrategy is up 500, 600%. So it's a case study. And this is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. More and more companies are going to do this as they realize they take from the Michael Saylor playbook. So to me, uh, this is pretty, pretty big news. Any uh, thoughts before I move forward? No, oh, good, bro. Uh, so we have this as well. Uh, momentum shifts in today in Bitcoin markets as institutional outflows slow and optimism grows for future highs. I do want to share here the Bitcoin ETF flow. This is from BitMEX. So we saw a pretty weak day. Let me uh, make this a little bigger for you guys. We saw a pretty weak day from BlackRock as BlackRock only saw... $35.5 million in inflows. Uh, Fidelity, though, big day yesterday for Fidelity. $261.8 million flowed in to the ETF from Fidelity. And, of course, the big one here, Grayscale selling. Uh, it ticked up from 169 on Friday to yesterday, $350 million, which actually brought a net flow, Robin, of $15.7 million still flowed into BTC. Uh, so what are your thoughts on, on this? I mean, take a look here, Robin. Look from March 19th, right? You saw everything kind of slowing down. And of course, that is really when we saw the massive outflows, the net massive outflows. Um, do you think this thing is going to reverse again? Or, or is this kind of the new norm, 30 million, 20 million a day? Uh, my thing is, is how long is it going to be before you we get that? that retail driven parabolic uh fomo right and you you agree that's coming right we, have, we haven't we haven't we haven't we haven't had that right i know we crossed all-time highs but you know every cycle early in the cycle or earlier in the cycle you cross all-time highs now we, we we did this a little earlier than expected uh pre-having which is the first time it's ever happened uh but you know we did have the etf going live which had the surge of liquidity but post having, I mean, there's a supply shock and it's just, it's not even debatable. It's going to, it's going to have an effect on the price to the upside. It just depends on how dramatic it's going to be. Only so much Bitcoin that is being mined every day. That amount's getting cut in half. The demand is there and it's not going to subside in the next 27 days. How, how far away is the year uh, they have? It's about 27 days away. And with, with that right said, you know, it's, I'm just very curious on when is retail going to get in. And I think that it's it's not that far away, right? We have 23 days, 9 hours, 25 minutes, 14 days. seconds. Wow. Yeah. So, Remember, yeah. The, the, it goes by block height, right? Yeah. April so, 19th. Damn. Yeah. Having is, is right around the corner. And so, you know, post-having, the, 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 the supply demand, it's going to create a squeeze on Bitcoin and the price. And so, yeah, it's it, the, the retail FOMO is coming when it, when it hits, it's going to hit hard brother. And those flows that you were looking at uh, are going to, those are going to absolutely multiply by factor two, three, maybe four, who knows? Um, the, the all time highs on volumes and inflows, I think are yet to be seen uh, once wall street gets a taste of it. Remember in institutions, have not gotten exposure to Bitcoin yet. Now, what we've seen is hedge funds, uh, the private investors. What we're not seeing right now is retirement accounts, pension funds, uh, pension funds uh, also uh, foreign, uh, you know, foreign um, companies as well, uh, getting their position in. And so, uh, remember, we shared last week that the largest pension fund in the world, from Japan, one point four trillion dollars. They're looking to enter into um, possibly holding some Bitcoin on their balance sheet. So 
Yeah. Uh, that should be pretty exciting. Yeah. So yeah. Well, once the sovereign funds come in, man, I'm, I'm telling you, that's that's also another big piece of the pie. There's a lot of institutions uh, internationally that dabble in in trade, uh, holding commodities, holding bonds, holding gold uh, through the ETFs uh, in the U- U.S. based markets, and so there's going to be some percentage there as, as well. Uh, before we bring Magic on, I do want to give a big thank you to our channel sponsor, Legacy Network. Uh, we get so caught up in making money and making fun of each other and posting stupid stuff on Twitter and investing in dumb meme coins that we forget to enhance and better ourselves and our mindset. And Legacy is looking to bridge GameFi with personal development. And so their app will be launching soon. I would recommend you join their Telegram. That link is in the description of this video so you can stay up to date on when that releases. We will be reviewing that app when it comes out. I got a, a small look into it. It looks absolutely amazing. Being able to better yourself, being able to uh, to find new ways to time manage, and, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, and to be able to make some money on the back end as well. It's pretty exciting. So big thank you to Legacy Network. And with that being said, it's Magic Tuesday, which means we got magic today because it's Tuesday. What's up, Magic? What's going on, guys? How you doing, brother? I'm the only one that found that awkward. No, no, Rocco did. No, Magic. Yeah, ma- ma- Magic's cool, man. He's not a... <clears throat> can't say the word. Magic, thank you so much, man. Uh, we love having you on. Uh, Tuesdays are great days. We love having you here. So, BTC saw a nice rally from around 64, got down to like 63, 71. Where are we at now with Bitcoin? And what are you expecting over the next... By Friday and then maybe closing out the month. We know we have uh, end of month, end of quarter options that are expiring. Any insight on those and how those could potentially affect the price of Bitcoin going into April? Uh, In terms of like options expiry, um, I know there's people out there that have analysis on it. I'm not the best source. I'll Mm -hmm. be up front with you. You guys know me. I'm purely a charts guy. Um, so if there is an edge in that department, I definitely don't hold the key to it. I won't, I won't lie to you guys there and tell you that I know something I don't. So, um, I, I pay almost no attention to it now end of the quarter, end of the month. Um, you know, if there's like a weekly ending as well, that's coming in there, it does matter to me in the sense that I'm going to get new averages and I'm going to get new levels. So to me, it is a big deal. And sometimes you do get volatility going into it. So, uh, for me though, uh, you know, price is king. Price is always king. And where we're sitting at, we did have a nice rally, if you recall. Um, came right off of the monthly open. Uh, if you remember from the last time we spoke, we said, you know, you can't really confirm a high until you're below this box, which is going to be your low of the month and the open of the month. You know, going out to like the extremely high time frames, you can see why. So, you know, that was your bounce zone. And there's no confirmed top until you're living below this little local zone here, which you can see was also a pretty big area on the monthly chart as well over here. And now you're getting that push. Uh, 73 is still a big area to me. Um, you know, I'm open to both scenarios where we remain fairly bullish here and try to make a new high because you do have higher lows in place. Um, we have been consolidating for, you know, essentially an entire month. Um so yeah, a new a new high could be made. Uh, you know, there's several trades that are available to us and ideas. Um, in terms of the long, I, I started really looking for the long uh, setup like this. It's just a harmonic setup, uh, so really just a common retrace type thing. Where I was looking at this, if this remained overall range bound, uh, that I would be looking for it to you know get that 50% mark at the B leg, which you got, kind of identifying the range median. And then back down to the range loan without leaving the range, aka leaving structure. And now you're running back to the range highs. Um, And this is a range bound idea that would come in on time for tomorrow. And it'd be just above the current high here. So um, that would be something I'd like. It would remind me a lot of what we did back in um, 2020 before the halving. So, you know, it it would give me a similar type trade. Now, this thing hasn't been trading identical uh, to the last cycle. So it's one of those things where you can't really marry ideas like this. You can only be prepared for them. So uh, this is 2020. This is the halving, right? And we did the exact same thing. You can see that we've got a really nice high. You made a low. You made your new high, identified your range EQ, came down, tested the bottom side of the range, came back up, 
Got her by bullish at the top side of the range before a decent size retrace. And it took a full month later to come up, take that high, and then continue setting in higher lows before going on. Uh, this is a completely different, you know, cycle. So things don't have to play out like they did last time. However, you know, things often do rhyme and you should be prepared for, you know, any kind of a scenario in that regard. So for me, I am still looking for upside until uh, we're essentially living below. I would say the weekly open is fairly important here because uh, this is technically a short setup. Uh, but, you know, the 2021 high at 69K is also your previous week's high locally on the chart. So you can start kind of putting two and two together from a low time frame perspective. Uh, so if you go out to like your weekly chart, all you're wanting to do is just identify some simple things. Uh, all right, I've got a uh, previous week high here. This is my weekly open. If I were to give up the weekly open at 67,272, things really do look like I'm probably going to come back inside this range and, and live here for a little bit. And that idea that I presented just now becomes pretty relevant. Um, the previous week high is going to be your early indicator that that might be taking place. And that's at 69. Oh, what is it? Actually, it's 68,991. Uh, the previous all time high is 69,182. So about a $200 zone there. Uh, there is some other stuff that would kind of present uh, the same idea that if that level is lost, um, you know, you'll, you'll stay inside the range. So if we're going to remain bullish, you want to live above what this little single print right here. And I'll show you what that is. It's on XO here. So we've got like our own little templates and stuff in the group and we've had them for some time. Um, so all this is identifying this one specifically is just single prints, uh, for me. Uh, I'm just looking for essentially voids of price where, where there was no restriction. So when you see like volume gaps on the volume profile, this is just quantifying that for you. Uh, down to whatever tick size that you'd like. Obviously, I'm a child, so mine's set at 69. But you can see it at 68, 870. <laughs> I have 50. never seen that magic. <laughs> that looks pretty cool, man. Yeah, it is. It's a it's an interesting software. Um, it's the same one we do like order flow. I've kind of shown it before, but um, just a different template. Uh, so you know, on this one, just really looking to identify, you know, if there was to be uh, a breakdown. Um, oftentimes these single prints will present uh that area. And the reason being is if you re-enter this area and it's not defended, there's really nothing here to hold you up. Uh, no open interest was built up here. There's no orders that, you know, could be affected. So uh, you'd be looking at a, usually a pretty quick drop. And so, you know, if you live above the previous week high, so both from a charting standpoint and now from, you know, just a very, I wouldn't say order flow standpoint, but just the uh, confluence of these two items here. Yeah. You want to live above this area if you're going to re-challenge your prior all-time high. Um, now you've come up to the previous previous week. So if you recall, these are the weekly timeframes that we just closed out. You'll see that this was your week here and you have come up straight away to this weekly naked point of control. So another thing that's in confluence with living above the 2021 high is that that would also be kind of like implying that you've found acceptance back into some, you know, prior range, which, you know, I don't have any stats on this where it's like, oh, you have to hold these, but once you're back inside this, we're looking to fill out the weekly naked point of control. Would like to hang on to this value area, low area, and then consolidate under resistance, continuing to make higher lows. Because what you'll notice is on the way up, there's really not like you built out a bunch of support here. <laughs> you know, so if you start losing this area, you can start, you know, targeting some of these lows. And then, you know, nothing's really broken at that time. You're not looking for 40K or anything. You're just playing the range and you just got a bigger consolidation. Um, and then, you know, people would, probably start to say, well, this is a giant triangle, whatever it may be. And that's how that forms, right? So, um, however, if you stay up here and you start breaking above specifically 71,811, like, you know, get consolidation here, live above this level. I really don't see why you wouldn't um, make a new high. Uh, the only thing that's coming in, we've talked about this previously, and I'll remind you guys is that the end of March and beginning of April is going to be a pivot for me in the market in terms of time. Uh, it is all based on our macro reversal pattern in terms of uh, a harmonic, which was uh, this guy right here, right? And then we're looking for X to D. And so all we've done here, and I'll get rid of these because there's no longer necessary now that we've done our fractal comparison, our, our squirrel comparison. You've got X to D here. So you're just taking the length of this reversal pattern and you're just measuring it. And then you're projecting that out and you'll see that our 50% mark comes in here right at the end of March, beginning of April. So that would be an interesting point on the chart for me in terms of, um, you know, pivots. So 
yeah, that, that's really it. You know, the analysis is pretty simple. Live above 69K, things are all right um, in terms of like looking for fresh new highs. Uh, breaking above 71, 811 locally would be pretty important for me to do that. Um, the today's sh- trade was actually a short. If anybody was curious, um, you you had a very easy setup to be quite upfront with you guys. Uh, you went right into the uh, yeah. Shame well, I mean, you. day trade. You're, Shame. you're not doing anything crazy here, but you got the previous day high. So um, pre- previous day high is always something you want to have marked on your chart, just like the previous week high. You've got this naked point of control here. You know that you're likely targeting this area, and you have a bearish reversal pattern like uh, on the low time frames. So, you know, you'd be looking at this and saying, all right, well, we've swept the previous day high. We've back tested it. Where might I go? Well, I've got obvious support here, but you just go to, you know, like a basic tool like the pivots and just say, okay, my previous day pivot or previous day session average of price was right here as well. These actually, I've gone back all 200 plus days that uh, TradingView will let me. And these hit like a 90.95% rate on a daily session. So um, very rarely are you going to miss this pivot. And I do give it some leeway, usually within like about a quarter of a percent in terms of uh, price action. But um, 90.95%, 91% hit rate. So if you took the short, you know, this is a pretty big take profit. Um, Also, you'll notice generally it ends up being very good support and strong trends. So like if you have a really strong trend, you know, and this is your prior day's average, you can see it generates here. Once you're above it, these end up being pretty good as you're stair stepping up, right? The trend's pretty strong and you really don't see any weakness in the trend until what? You start giving up that previous day average and living below it, right? So now you can see how it's no longer giving you those like really strong bounces. Uh, so, you know, if we're going to continue up, you want to see this, you know, bounce, bounce, bounce. And these are just prior day averages and they're um, they're not dynamic. So they're not changing. They're very they're very much set in stone, which I like. Um, so, yeah, that's that's how I'm seeing things on the low time frames and the high time frames. You know, the, the chart's very bullish on the high time frames. There's really not much you can say about it other than, you know, if you're calling tops right here, uh, you could be you know, in for a bad day. Like I know people are doing that on, on Twitter sometimes, but everybody wants to do it to get clad, I guess. I, I mean, I don't know how to, what Cloud else they'd be chasing. doing it for. And it's definitely not, it's definitely not to make money because they're losing money if they're shorting these tops I don't, you know, and they're not taking profits. That, that's what I don't get about traders. Well, not, not traders, I guess anyone. Like, why are you more concerned with, with, like you said, having clout than making money, right? If I'm trading, yeah, I am looking to make money. Bingo. Yeah, Bingo. doesn't pay the bills to get clout and the uh, the Twitter clout unless uh, unless you're selling your post, I guess. Um, you can also you can also make money playing bingo as well. Did that with my mom one time, won a little bit of money. <laughs> um, Magic, I want to share my phantom chart while I'm doing that. Can you pull up your phantom chart? I'm on the one day. I'm on the four hours. So yesterday I tweeted, "Hey, I'm entering into a phantom long trade. What I saw playing out here, and I actually bought on this candle right here." Uh, actually I bought on the, I believe the, the, the candle before that, this one right here. Uh, so saw a little cup and handle on the four hour on phantom. So entered into a long was in profit, was going to let it ride to about dollar 20. Let's just say dollar 20. Uh, you can see here how phantom got rejected at this premium zone here. Uh, twice mm-hmm. it wicked up there. Well, three times it wicked up there. Um, and then it kind of got invalidated. I mean, it did. You know, the handle did reach further than 50%. And, and from my experience, anytime it, re- anytime it goes the opposite way, more than 50%, to me, that, that's an invalidated. Maybe, can we maybe get a massive head and shoulders here or inverse head and shoulders, potentially, which would also be a very positive, um, a very positive uh, pattern, right? That typically breaks to the upside. Uh, but I did enter a long uh, into Phantom as it crossed around $105.5. As you can see here, we're currently in the green and we're seeing a reversal pattern at the end of this downtrend, which is a hammer, right? So typically, whether it's in an uptrend or a downtrend, uh, hammers are typically in downtrends. Uh, You do tend to see a reversal as what this candle tells you is the bears tried to push the price all the way down, but the bulls reclaimed control. And if this candle holds over the next hour and 30 minutes, uh, the bulls took control and kind of flipped the structure of, at least on a shorter time frame, a uh, phantom. Uh, also taking a look here, we did have a big order block here, which around 11% of trading happens, so around $220 million worth of volume. Um, what are you seeing on FTM uh, magic? Uh, is there is this a 
is there a trade setup within this chart that you maybe potentially could be looking at? Well, uh, yeah, potentially. Um, so this is my, my phantom chart. I have not updated in a long time. Actually, we called game on your show. If you recall, um, we called the, the low for it and the, you're coming into resistance. So this was actually a zone. I was eyeballing when it dropped and I was eyeballing it based on the structure of this, um, volume profile being a lowercase B here and the rejection off the point of control. We came down, you formed a really, really textbook ABC channel. Uh, so just a, a very easy harmonic to identify. We were targeting this zone here, you flipped it, and then you ran this range for a while that was put together. And now that you've done that, you've come back up and back tested resistance. So we need to get rid of a lot of junk on the chart. And I'll even get rid of this. This was one, um, I remember when I did this analysis because it was before the uh, founder left or whatever, and, and then everybody freaked out when this whole thing happened. But it was always uh, a Kanye. short. It was always yeah. going to be a short. Yeah, I remember when that went down because uh, random people in the Discord were freaking out, and I was like, "What are, you, what are we freaking out about?" So, um, as always, you know me. I'm going to start out on the high time frames, man. I just want to take a look, see if there's anything here that can give us any kind of indication of. Um, my only issue with the idea of the trade is, is I think you're going to need consolidation here beneath this resistance because that was a big area for me uh, going into uh, this area. And yeah, let's get rid of this altogether. All right. So I'm going to get rid of this box now. It's just no longer necessary. Um, yeah, straight away. You're, you just want to see some kind of an acceptance into this zone here. Uh, what is that? Quarter four, 2021 lines up with about everything else. What was my three month here? So you'll probably need some kind of consolidation, I would imagine, if we're going to get back into this. And we need to see where's the nearest support. So ways away. Wow. Quarter one from 2023. And I'll try to be as quick as possible here because I know you guys got other stuff to do. Are you good, bro? Do, do, do. Yeah, it really does need to get continuation because there's really nothing between you and here. Um, if you notice, like there's really no built up price here. Uh, just kind of like every time it gets above 65 cents, it goes to a dollar. So um mm. That's a good sign in theory. You know, if, if the market's going to remain bullish, you would think that the coins would go up with it rather than it just retracing if, if Bitcoin continues to do its thing. So uh, the weekly candle, not necessarily a bad thing. It's only Tuesday. So like I know some people will freak out about a candle that looks like this, but there's a lot of time left on the uh, on the chart. So it is one of those things where you, you don't need to worry about that too much. Nice weekly level. Yeah. All right, let's do the range here and figure out exactly what's going on. So there's one of two ways to look at price action like this. You can do like a whole, you know, thing and say this is my um, my previous range in terms of market structure. Uh, that gives us 141. Or I like to do time, as you know, and I'll usually find October 1st to the end of the year because I am curious on what these quarterly ranges look like. They do oftentimes give us a pretty good window of what price action was looking like on a non-subjective scale, uh, for lack of a better term. And that sometimes can be really important to take out your own ideas of the chart and give it something consistent like time, because we can't just change time. Um, and there it is. There's your point of control from April. All right. And I know I'm labeling and I probably shouldn't be, but it helps people at home, I hope, where they can see what I, why I'm putting this here and what it is rather than um, me Find just kind of putting a random line there. Yeah, so uh, essentially what you've come into here is the April naked point of control that you left over on your dump. So when this thing dumped down uh, from the, this consolidation, uh, you did leave a monthly point of control up here, uh, this little zone. And you can see that the value area high does come in right around $1.62. So to me, you know, that's this uh, 117 level is pretty big. Uh, you may end up pulling back off of it and putting in a larger range, kind of like you were just indicating. And if you were to do that, uh, you know, I really look at the break of the quarter one high here from 2023. This level has been uh, fairly key throughout history. And is there a way to extend this to the left? Eh, we can do it this way with the shift key. 
Yeah, look at that. So there's our quarter one high from 2023. You can see it was very key here, mm. somewhat key here. Um, and again here, so we know that the break above this level is probably somewhat important. So where we got March, could we use March? Yeah, we probably could. You're living on the value area high. So key area is going to be that 65 cent and 80 cent region. So yeah, Imagine, these are the just, only just levels. For, just really for maybe think. someone new watching, uh, you're doing all this for to kind of show people, hey, support and resistance. Well, you yeah, know how, how price reacts in certain areas, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, and it's also just to help you guys, you know, hey, how do I find key areas I want to trade at? Like, um, so you know, this one, just looking at what we've got resistance wise. So you are at resistance. So you do want to see it holding on to you know this area. You've got a bit of a mini range that's been going on for the better part of a week here since March twentieth. Uh, above your value area high in March, right? So you can see that this this range still is developing for another four or five days. But you know, if you stay above the range high here, the value area high, and consolidate under this resistance, you certainly can break in and probably make a push at that time to like a dollar sixty two would be the next area I'd be really interested in. That's a pretty good size push. Mm. Uh, but you know, if I was looking for a long myself, um, you know. I would probably want to, you know, be cautious in this area because if you start breaking back into the range, to me, there's really nothing built up here. And I, I do start kind of eyeballing all the way back down into the previous week, like open and low area at this 80 cent point of control. It's also your like 50% mark um, of your like local uh, Fibonacci pool here. So, you know, you would see yourself coming back into like this 80. Oh, no, there it is. We were in log scale. We got to get out of log. There we go. So if I was looking for a fresh entry in my ideal trade, uh, which you know you may or may not get because I'm a pretty risk adverse person, would be probably somewhere down here. Uh, just the confluence of this, I really like it. This has ran really hard. You've come into really key resistance now. Um, if you got a short setup here, like on a swing failure pattern, I'd actually take that short. Uh, but if you're trading this like local range here, you could very easily say, well, you know, Magic's got his higher time frame, but I'm more so looking at this as I want to see higher. You're down like a one hour and you could just, you know, start trading above the uh, the range, right? I hope we can get our trading view to work. And we'll see if it'll turn back on. There we go. I've been noticing that with fixed range here lately. So, you know, you would look at it like so. You'd say that this is probably, you know, locally I could trade this as long as I'm above the range. And I'm in here, now I can trade this local range even, right? So now I can trade this like internally. So if I was looking for risk on positions, you are correct. You're at the low of the range. You could look for risk on, and basically you'd be looking for a stop loss below these lows. Because, you know, if you lose those lows, you, you probably are going to make that dip down into this gold pocket here locally. Um, and that's a decent sized chunk. If you're in spots, 20%. If you're in any kind of a leverage position, it just, you know, it's exponential from there. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you all do, we do is trade leverage, 17 bro. claimed. We don't do spot oh, around here. leverage. Just it is leverage. stop hard, hard stop losses all around. Um, and just like with uh, Bitcoin, you know, I don't have FTM for uh, the web version on EXO, but you can see this is probably um, a single print as well. So there's really nothing here holding you up. So if you lose these lows, you know, you're probably going to, I would just start targeting these lows here, which is essentially all the way down at that point of control. So, uh, but yeah, you're at the range low, man. Um, internally, that's a nice internal range above your monthly range. So, yeah, you're probably gonna bounce around here for a little bit. If you break above 117 and you hold it on, I'd say maybe a four hour or a daily basis, you can start looking for new highs and maybe even run up to like this 162 uh, level if price can get that push, right? That, so if you're bullish, that's what you wanna see. Um, for me, I would just trade this for what it is for right now. And then if it breaks down, you know, I'd take the L and then just look for the next available trade there. Uh, I'd be curious, what's the, not the weekly pivot, but the bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly, perfect. So you do have, like I said, I'm not a huge uh, options guy, but at the end of every month and quarter, you do come in with a nice fresh new pivot. Uh, the hit rate on Bitcoin on these is like 77% for the month um, and about 73, I think for the quarter. So, you know, fairly decent numbers. I don't know what those translate to something like FTM. I'd have to run the stats, but you know, these would imply as well that eventually you will come back into this range. So maybe we do pump into the end here and uh, eventually come back to these, or, you know, maybe we don't, you know, the, Stats stats say you will, but um, you don't have to by any means. So uh, hopefully that helps. I, I know that was kind of a no, all man, over no, the place we, analysis, but great, I man. always start on the high time frames. Yeah, so. it, it's important. Like I said, you know, I say this pretty much all the time you come on. It's important for people to see the process of it, not just, hey, uh, enter long, enter short. Uh, that's why we love bringing you on, Magic. Uh, we we appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Uh, I am, um, 
I'm gonna set a real, real, uh, real tight take profit on that uh, on that phantom um, there. But I, but I am expecting <laughs> it to get to about a dollar, dollar twelve, dollar thirteen. But um, oh yeah, you're trading the inside range. You're good, man. Yeah, yeah that's that's a good trade. Yeah, I mean, as long as you're not like trading it like I want it to go to like you know all time highs. I know you're not like that. It but, is on a hundred x leverage. There's a lot of people in the. Just kidding. Oh, oh, kidding. Oh, wow. You can't even do 100x leverage on Fan. That's. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> really guys, best. if you want more Magic Internet money, uh, I believe uh, Rocco dropped the link to the Discord in the chat. Uh, I'm in there. Jump in there. Uh, great stuff from Magic as always. Yeah. We appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again next week. Sounds good, guys. Have a good day. Thanks for having me. Thanks, brother. Take care. Thank you. All right, uh, and then I do want to give a little love to the chat. Uh, we had uh, Ultima Maya, 199 Super Chat. Uh, we had Pabs B, uh, also Polish, Crypto Slab, Jins B, Head, Head Sands Tales, uh, Gerald, uh, BG, Crypto Trans, Tavion, A007, uh, Terry Dromer, KB, Jay Goody, Jason, Stephen Young, Jack Bit, uh, Crypto Cloud 9, Moon Boot Boy, Moon Boot Boy uh, Crypto Machinist, Philippe, uh, Ways of the Jedi, Reed, Vac, Vac T, uh, Purple 303, Big Daddy Woo, and Ryan K. To all of you, hola! Welcome to Sin City Crypto. Also, we had a 50 gifted memberships from our boy Jimmy Jimmy. So, uh, my boy over here, making it rain. So, I don't know um, what business world you come from, Jimmy, but typically when uh, you help someone, they pay you, not the other way around. We, <laughs> we appreciate you, Jimmy. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, a couple quick hitters here. Uh, so I mentioned the SEC is seeking $2 billion, that's with a B, dollars in penalties from Ripple Labs, which everyone is speculating, hey, does this mean that Ripple is going to have to sell more of their tokens? Price hasn't really moved. We also have Akash Network. Daily Network spend on Akash just reached an all-time high. This chart shows the dollar value of the AKT token spent on the network. So what does this mean? More people are using it. Great. Also, NVIDIA has announced an AI-powered healthcare agent that outperforms nurses and costs $9 an hour. Wow. Um, then we have this from Eric Balkunas, the senior ETF analyst at Bloomberg. Looks like Hong Kong is going to allow in-kind creations and redemptions for spot Bitcoin ETFs in Q2. Unlike the U.S., which is cash create only, which could help spark assets under management and volume in the fast growing region via new note. Uh, and so more bullish news. This is great. Also, Eric uh, Balchunas also uh, changed his or updated his ETF approvals for Ethereum. And uh, if you want to pull it up, Rocco. <coughs> Rocco. Now, uh, we have uh, ETH, uh, ETF approvals at 25%. Uh, so, and he also said here that he's very pessimistic on this 25%. So, we know the SEC has uh, put the Ethereum, uh, put Ethereum uh, in the crosshairs, uh, filed some new lawsuits, uh, and, uh, well, 25% chance of etf approval now uh and this used to be all the way up to about uh 75 percent a, a while ago so for eth uh, i don't know if it was that high i don't think it's gonna happen man in may you know what the sec it, they're literally trying to classify eth as a security yeah yeah it, they have some uh some lawsuits pending there so it's uh and they still got that coinbase lawsuit with the staking which mm -hmm. we heard fidelity uh fidelity just uh, amended their application to include staking. Uh, so with that being said, let's move on to our, uh, our Tuesday segment, the rate my portfolio segment. And it is today brought to you by decrypted.tax. Uh, we all talk about making money. Well, what about keeping your money, right? More important than making is how much you get to keep. Don't give all of it to uncle Sam. And well, you need a good tax professional, which is why we recommend you use decrypted.tax. Use the link in the description, set up a free consultation with Ernest and his team. So. This portfolio was submitted last week, and we're going to take a look here at where is this portfolio? What does it look like? Well, this is a $60,000 portfolio. It's got 57.5% in Bitcoin, 3% in ADA, 6.5% in Solana, 3.2% in Render, 6.5% in Avalanche, 
4.9% and Chainlink. Near gets 5%, and others are 13%, which includes in this order Theta, Gala, Pancake, Chat, GMR, XCAD, IMX, Beam, Game, Cody, Sand, and Trump. Robin, his goal is to convert the profits <laughs> into one Bitcoin and then cash out the rest. What would you rate this portfolio? What do you like? What do you not like? He's only 60K portfolio. He's only what? Uh, well, only 10, a little more than a little more than half of that's in Bitcoin, right? Right. Okay. Uh, but still, I mean, he wants to get to 100%. But so he's almost there. Yeah. Uh, as far as far as the overall, the overall perform or the overall kind of spread on this. So we can we can both agree that this is a pretty risk averse person, correct? Yeah, he's not looking to make a. Well, 10X. I mean, I don't know. I mean, honestly, you have Bitcoin. The guy's at, goal is to literally just have one Bitcoin. No, oh, yeah, no, that's a good goal to go yeah. Yeah, get. You know, yeah. I think I think a lot of us should try to uh, try to put one Bitcoin aside, uh, and then on the long term. But uh, you know, at the same time, we're in a bull market, uh, the early stages of bull market. And so for myself personally, my strategy is to go a little bit more risk on at this point. And obviously with Bitcoin, you're a little bit risk averse as far as crypto returns are concerned. Now, if you're from the traditional world and you're looking more towards uh, retirement investments, uh, you know, Bitcoin obviously is, is the gold standard in crypto for the long-term play. But in the short term, you know, we're, we're, we're ramping up into a uh, bull market. So, uh, Maybe something to consider there if you want to if you want to if you're looking for a little more gains. Now for what you're trying to accomplish, I think you're pretty solid here. Uh, Bitcoin over fifty percent. You're not going to cry about no ETH. I mean, right now, I mean, uh, ETH. Come on, let's got a those, target on. Let's see those tears, right? man. Come on, head it out. Uh, now, uh, yeah, I, I think it, it's it's a solid portfolio. Uh, I like the I like the diversification. I I would just I I, I feel like. Every week when we do these, it's Bitcoin and then it's all the layer ones. Like just just take 20 layer ones and then just pick four or eight of them. That's what we see, right? And I would like to see more myself personally is if you're going to have a portfolio to diversify. I mean, what's, you know, Solana plus ADA plus Avalanche, plus near. These are all layer one. So my opinion is pick one or two and then scale to the next step. Take the next the next level down, right? Uh, go with something a little bit outside the box. Maybe, you know, you, you have the link play. You know, maybe you should do layer one, then link, then maybe gaming, then... Uh, but what if I say, hey, my gaming is AVAX? That's my, that's my gaming play. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't mention Link or Avax in my, in my comparison. I, you know, you have Cardano, Solana, Near. Uh, I would I would scratch one of those, either scratch Cardano or scratch Near or scratch Solana, one of the three, and then you know whichever one you feel the most confident in, and then you know you, if you're going to use Avalanche as gaming, sure that's your, your different sector, but maybe split up high and low for each sector. So if you're going to do gaming and, you, and you're confident in an avalanche, why not do avalanche and then gala? And then if you like uh, layer ones, do one that's a little bit bigger, maybe Solana and then near. Those are, those are quite, quite a, a ways away from each other as far as market cap. So he does have gala as well, which is the second highest holding in his uh, other segment. He's got theta. So he's got the, right, the, uh, the, video distribution kind those of are, well, those are those are a small percentage of 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 so those are a tiny percentage uh, so how many those are so the total others consists of 13.4% and in, is it in this order okay not bad i mean not, not bad, bad. I don't, so what what number do you give this i mean but think but look at it this way you, you're you're trying to get one bitcoin and you you have in others your 13%. You got 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 different projects. Um there's no point in having theta gala in there, right? In in, in the cuz those are those are going to be tiny. You're only going to get so much upside. If you're if you're have a if you have some allocated for long shots like your Trump 
uh, Cody. That's the and um, I think IMX is a good one. Yeah, but I'm just saying that like if you're gonna have these tiny por- tiny the the tiny others, then then make them at home runs, right? There's no point in holding a, a small amount of theta. Theta, I mean, I mean, what, what are you gonna do? Take two hundred dollars and turn it into twenty two hundred dollars? Like, you know what I mean? That that and that's that's an eleven x, right? Shame on you. No, no, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, why have the big boys in such a small percentage? Like, if you're gonna have others category, have eleven tokens in there, then hit some home runs, man. We we are in a bull market. Take some risk on your smaller plays. Like, there's, I'm, I'm just saying, there's no point in having near avalanche, uh, you know, thousands of thousands of dollars, and then having eighty bucks in theta. Like, so you sound bearish on it. So what number are you giving? All that bearish talk, and you're giving them an eight. Okay. I'm at like an eight and a half here. Yeah, Actually, it's it's all about goals. So, yeah. I, I like this portfolio. I, I love Near, love Render, love Solana, love Ada, love Ada. I love all of it, right? That's listed. Now, as far as the others, Theta, yes. Gala, yes. Cake, no. Chat, no idea what the hell that is. GMR, eh. XCAD, uh. Eh. IMX, this probably is my favorite out of the... Uh, out of the others, Beam, great. Not sure what game is. Cody, ugh, not really. Sand, Metaverse, play great. You obviously know how I feel about this one. So uh, this, to me, is an eight and a half. If your only but goal... do you think... So he's got a 60K portfolio. Don't you think that having 11 tokens go down? 11 plus another... What else seven. More? So another, another seven... Uh, so you got 18 tokens and, you know, less than 30K, so probably 27,000. And so it, it just seems like you spread way thin, man. Just, you know, you got 60 grand, like, like consolidate this, man. Pick your favorite projects. I, I, you got the home runs, consolidate it down. Pick, pick four or five and then scrap a few of the, the bigger boys, the, the, you know, pick, pick near chain, like, you know, pick, pick a couple winners there. And then consolidate it. Get the one, the ones that you feel the most confident about, back those. Because I know you can't be hyper, super bullish on all of them equally, right? I, uh, no, I mean, if you had to, if you had to pick, okay, R- Render or Solana, which one are you picking? Solana. Okay, they, see, that's what you gotta do there. Like, you know, like Chainlink or Avalanche. Chainlink. Okay, then, then that's how you should approach your portfolio. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, near or Cardano? Near. near over Cardano. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I love Cardano, but I'm sorry. I, I, if I had to pick one, I'm going near. You going Cardano? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Rob's at an eight. I'm at eight and a half. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section. Also, if you want a portfolio reviewed, submit it via Twitter DM. We're gonna move on to some pretty big news here. Holy shit! dropped a five hundred dollar super check. Good I think Lord. that is our biggest one we've ever gotten. Viva That's pretty big, man. Wow. Wow. Jimmy, man. Poor Jimmy, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, also, we had um, uh, someone. Rob, Rob. Who, what was the name of the person that that uh, did one uh, one membership? I want to give him a shout out to. Uh, uh, heads and tails. Yeah. So uh, take a look at. Uh, Uh, so we had one one gifted membership from Heads and Tails, and then yeah. and then also just shout out Carlos A has been a member for eighteen months. Jimmy Jimmy paid five hundred to open up the club. Uh, Jimmy, we can literally just take you to one of the nightclubs in Vegas yeah, and yeah. buy a bottle of that five hundred. But uh, well, you ever try to buy a bottle in Vegas? No, it ain't five hundred bucks. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, big thank you to all of you that support us. We appreciate you, Jimmy. Jimmy, we love you. Don't, that's, don't, that's the tip on that night. If you ever Just come to tip. Vegas and and someone convinces you to go to the nightclub and buy a bottle, say no. Uh, it's about the price of a small car. Yeah, used like, car, used he's, car, not he's, a new one. He's not even joking. Like yeah. legitimately, he's not kidding. Yeah, it's usually about four or five grand. Yeah. bottle service. Booth. Yeah. Uh, I want to see some Jimmy emojis in the chat, man. Let's get some Jimmy emojis. Uh, while you guys are doing that, I'll be doing this. Well, I won't be doing this. The DOJ is has indicted KuCoin. So, cryptocurrency exchange KuCoin and two of its founders have been criminally charged 
with Bank Secrecy Act violations and unlicensed money transmission offenses. This is from the Department of Justice. Why does all the bullshit come from the Southern District of New York? Bro. Right? What the hell is wrong with you guys? Some more context here. This is from the block. Crypto exchange KuCoin laundered $9 billion. Flouted anti-money laundering laws, says the indictment from the Department of Justice. A couple things here. The Department of Justice lodged charges against crypto exchange KuCoin and two of its founders alleging they violated anti-money laundering laws. Uh, charges related to operating an unlicensed money transmitting business and violating the Bank Secrecy Act. So guys, all this is, when you hear Gary Genzer say, come in and register, they didn't do that. And so now they're being charged now, for... Th this makes no sense to me <laughs> at all. They, like, none of this makes sense. KYC, pull up my laptop real quick, uh, Rocco. Look, look at this. This is KuCoin.com. You log in. It's always said this. You're not allowed to use it in the United States. You look at it. Based on your IP address, uh, we currently do not provide services in your country. It's plain and simple. Why is the U.S. suing them? Because some degenerate wants to go and mask their IP address, pay for some subscription service, so the server pings in India to go log in to trade and then to send it all back. Like, that is not KuCoin's fault, bro. This is, uh, this is Gary Gensler. It's so crazy to me. This is Gary Gensler. Gra this is his last breath. You know, when... I don't want to get this analogy because it's a pretty bad one. I don't get flagged by the FBI. But it's pretty much like your, your, your last grasp. Like, okay, all right, all right. I got one more. got one more little ounce of gas left in the tank. L let, me, let me go after this KuCoin, this low-hanging fruit. But, hey, guess what? Uh, the token really didn't really dip. Uh, of course, we'll go over a few tweets they put out. But, of course, people are running to take their money off. Um, I used, I've, I've KYC'd on KuCoin. This was probably two years ago. Uh, and then when I try to log back in, I get the same notice Rob just showed you. Is, yeah. Hey, you're not in the Ridiculous, U.S. Ridiculous, man. It, it, it's, it's insane to me. It's like me buying a car. You know, if I live in, if I live in Germany and I decide to buy a car in the U.S. You buy the Autobahn? The Autobahn, yeah. <laughs> so I get the car and I have it shipped to Germany and then I get sued. <laughs> or, or, or say uh, Ford gets sued. Like, Ford, you're selling your cars to Germany with... Like no, the guy just took it there. Yeah, but like, but like, he bought it secretly. He bought it on eBay and then had it shipped in a container, and you know, uh, overseas. But like, well, you knew that he was trying to buy it illegally. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, it's it's all BS. Uh, th I don't know. I'm not a lawyer or a judge, but I'm assuming that they're gonna have a lot of people on their side. You don't need to be a lawyer or a judge. You can't log into the website, man. <laughs> like, you can't use it. Like, what's, how? You're saying people, the, the lawsuit is that people are avoiding, the people are not signing up. KuCoin is not receiving their email address, their photo ID. They're not getting any of it. They don't offer it in the U.S. Like, I don't understand. It, it just is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of, man. And the, the sad thing is, is that they're probably just going to settle and not even go to court because it's cheaper to settle than it is to go through a, a four year litigation process for what? Why? OK, think about it this way. Why would you go through the whole litigation process if you're not even going to operate in the U.S.? Right. <laughs> you're like you're going to go to bat. You're going to go to you're going to go to war with the U.S. Uh, uh, like justice system. Who is, so you're going to be a foreign company. Think about it this way. You're going to be a foreign company going to a U.S. court. That is judged by a U.S. judge, and you're a foreign company. Like you, you stand no chance, man. You stand no chance, and it's not even it's not even criminal. Like, like uh, you know, you 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 killed somebody or you 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 harm somebody. So the judge has got no no sympathy, man. He's just gonna be like, oh yeah, you're 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 stealing money, you're trying to avoid uh, KYC. Like it, it's just there's gonna be no fight from from KuCoin. They're just gonna settle, man. They're going to settle because it's not even worth going to court for, right? Yeah. And then, obviously, they don't want to tarnish reputation. They want to operate internationally. And so they got to use the banking system 
the SWIFT system for, you know, there's a lot of banking systems that are in, integrated internationally. So you can't just flip the finger to the, the, the justice system, even though you operate internationally, unfortunately, the way that's the way it is. So you got to keep the U S happy. So you got to You got to settle and, and then nothing's going to happen. It's just, you, you know, flat smack brought up a really, you know, his, his, his comment there. KuCoin should have never gave in, bring back no KYC. Right. They tried. They tried to abide by the law and say, okay, fine. We won't onboard any users from the U S and they still got sued. Complete BS. Uh, back to the article here. Some more context for you guys. So the department says the exchange failed to maintain an adequate anti-money laundering program and failed to have reasonable procedures in place to confirm customers' identities and also failed to file suspicious activity reports, kind of like how the Pentagon couldn't keep track of where $6 trillion went or $6 billion. The government claims KuCoin allowed its platform to be used for laundering over $9 billion. Go take a walk on the sand. Uh, the commodity, now, the CFTC also filed a parallel civil action lawsuit against KuCoin on Tuesday. So they're getting it from all angles. Uh, some news from the indictment here. So in the indictments from CFTC, they called ETH a commodity, which I don't know if that means anything because they've done so before in other ones. And well, the SEC feels like, hey, we're the big daddy here. Uh, what we say goes and we have the last word. Uh, and then we have this. So, of course, everyone sees the news, makes the headlines. People start panicking. Hey, let me get my money off. Who knows what's going to happen? KuCoin did come out and say their assets are unaffected by the indictment. Um, they, they say they're one-to-one -one reserves. Um, I haven't really looked into it. I don't hold any money on KuCoin personally. I know a few of our community members do. Uh, but always, 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 uh, we always say self-custody. We still believe that. Um, so it, it is what it is. Uh, any other thoughts on, on this here? Uh, I said I have said my piece, which is not peaceful, angry, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. We also had a uh, five dollar super chat. Um, oh, hey, Seuss. We'll just leave it there. All right, thank you. What up, Jesus? <laughs> Easter's coming up, man. You uh, going Easter egg hunting? Uh, if I did an Easter egg hunt in my backyard, would you come dressed up as Easter Bunny and do the hunt? You you want me to dress up as an Easter bunny so your kids can? You got nothing better to do. Me. You got nothing better to do. <laughs> I got uh, nothing better to do. You're yeah. correct. Yes. That's yeah, absolutely. Sneaky, man. I don't know. Also, shout out to Duke Juan, uh, <laughs> Mark Dutch, uh, Avery, uh, John the Ripper, uh, Fortune Kasu, uh, to all of you. Hola! Welcome to Sin City Credit. Also, this is your last chance to say hello. If you are new here, we would love to give you a, a shout out before you wrap this thing up. And then also. Uh, uh, you know, I know we, we usually do it a little later in this show, but, um, uh, you know, uh, I want to, we like to celebrate new milestones here at Sin City Crypto and Let's be uh, honest, bro, we're doing it for the 500. No new milestones. We have, we have a fresh studio, man. You know, I, I, we don't have How the camera sitting down. I got to get used to it. You know, we got the new desk coming. There's no standing desk, so no more standing Rob. So. Also, no more big Rob, as you can see, uh, about yeah, four heads. Uh, Rocco goes, Robin, you want to put a pillow under you? <laughs> also, I am curious to see so how you are going to dance when we open the club sitting down. Bro. All the, oh, uh, okay, I'm going to sit here. I will sit here. Jimmy, if you'll allow me. I'm going to sit here, and I'm just going to watch. Jimmy, no, you got to dance. You're gonna I'm going to sit there with the club going on, right? Yeah. I want to hmm. see what you do, man. Okay. Anyways, guys, if you don't know how this works, uh, so when we hit new milestones, typically it's a, a certain amount of uh, likes, like 350 likes is I think are a new one. Uh, so when we reach like new new milestones on the likes. We uh, open up the club, have a party, celebrate. But we uh, have a new studio. Uh, or it's currently in the process of being built out. So uh, pretty excited about that. And without further ado, let's do what Vegas does best. Let's open up this damn club. Let's go! Oh, he's always got a prop in front of him. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so, oh, that's that's the new move. Okay. Bro, I'm telling you, man, and oh, see, and then you're gonna wow. do the you're gonna do the creepy eyes. Look, look watch the creepy eyes. Look, see, look at. People are like, what the hell are you doing? Um, <clears throat> classic roast beef. Uh, classic roast beef. Yeah. Mm. 
You know, um, we got a Theta video coming out later today. Mm. Uh, an update on Theta um, and some pretty interesting stuff towards the end. You don't want to miss it. Our ICP video yesterday dropped like it was hot. So big shout out to all of you supporting the content we put out. Um, and to all you ICP fans, uh, highly, highly, highly recommend you go watch that video. It was one of my favorite videos I have filmed. Um, you can tell if you watch the video, the excitement I have, and that is 100% purely genuine. I think ICP is an absolutely phenomenal project that once people realize what they can do on it, it's, uh, it's going to be hard to compete with everything they're doing. Mm. Um, also, what? <laughs> you ever crashed a boat into a bridge? Crazy, huh? That shit was nuts, dude. The Baltimore Bridge? Yeah. I mean, did they, did they crash into another one too? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, man. But I know there's still like three or four people missing. But oh, really, yeah, dude. But oh, man. that shit was crazy. I w I just saw the pictures. I, I thought it was. I thought it was fake. I thought it was AI generated. But a cargo ship literally yeah. ran into the pillar of the Baltimore Bridge. Um, it, it's just you know, of course, there's conspiracies, cyber attack, blah blah blah. I'm not going to get into all that, but um. But the good news, too, though, was the captain sent out a mayday. So the police were able to stop people from crossing the bridge. But there were still a few people that, that uh, you know, were on it and, and fell. And so um, mm. I know they recovered some people, but I'm not sure the exact numbers. But, yeah, that, that, was, that was insane. I uh, saw that at, like, uh, 1 a.m. in the morning, 1230. Mm. Which is when we left the studio yesterday after putting everything together. Um, long day, man. We been got, a long day. Got a couple more long ones, too. Gonna, yeah. We're going to make it happen. But once we're done, guys, uh, you will not find a better produ produced studio and produced channel on oh, YouTube. Man, we got some cool stuff in the works yeah. still. We're about 20%, 20 30% done with the studio. So. Yeah. Anyways, with that being said, Rocco. Well done. Hold on. What are we holding on for? Got a got to find the bot. We tornadoed it. You got to find the bot. There's no holding on. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoy the content. Uh, make sure to watch our Theta video coming out later in around 10 minutes. Until tomorrow. Peace. Crypto. Everybody know we here for entertainment and info. Gonna show you how to get that big dough. So every day stay tapped in. For big facts, no cap in. With Bitcoin, if you're in, then you win. We divide the pie with no fraction. It's Big Rob, David. I split the game, but they gave it. Name the coin that's your favorite. I got dry powder, why save it? To the OGs, new beginners. Special shout out to the well members. Buy a dip, sell winners. Ain't really nothing you can tell sinners. Tune in for the latest new flavors. They gonna teach us mean coins. They polarizing like barbecue chicken pizzas. I laugh with a major grin. Lag as we trade them in. Baddies, they came to sin. And sinners gonna play to win. Screaming, hola, till my bags are flowing over. Hold ya to the moon and to the solar. Won't I? Don't be letting for more.